In this part 2 video, you can see me laying down 2 point perspective grid using line tools and rulers. For an in-depth video on this, I'll add links in the description. I forgot to record the beginning part of the cliff rendering, however, you will see me doing the same techniques on the rest of the cliff. Using image as my reference, I'm following this downward direction of the rock formation by color, color picking and layering textures with a custom brushes. Here I'm using a custom smudge tool. The trick here is to mix smudge, smudge tool at 100%. This way it isn't smudging but pushing colors around giving this nice random rock texture. The brush is great for foliage as well as the rocks. I will also use lasso tool to make sharp edges that I can't achieve with a brush alone. I'm adding little rocks poking out the water so that, that my island itself doesn't look like a cutout. This will make it look more believable. Right now I'm using a lasso tool again to draw a shape of another island that's smaller in size but overlapping with my original island. This creates depth of field and to go back to my first video I'm adding more interest to the composition as I go along. I'm using variation of rock stem brushes as well as brushes to add cracks in the stone. I'm also adding different color variations but trying to keep them in the same tonal range. Now I'm adding moss and other foliage to this island to add consistency to the original island. I'm also playing with the shapes of the original island, adding and subtracting to figure out an interesting rock formation. Here I've decided to add a huge boulder to the original island that will extend to the original design. The idea is to make it like a valley or uphill path. I'm adding cooler colors on the areas of the rock facing away from the sun and warmer tones to the areas lit up by the sun. 